It's all right with me, Yisrael, to, to, to be invited before the presence of the Most High on this Shabbat, this Shabbaton. He has granted unto Yisrael as a sign and oath of his faithfulness unto them as he is faithful and committed unto us in all things. So he has designated and designated a day and a time we may come and gather in the power of his Hashem, his name, the authority the might, the beauty, the excellence, and the character of his mighty name. What a great privilege. Not only that, but a great honor. As our Akshimri pointed out to us on Khatsvi Imat, uh, there are not many elected to his calling. And yet out of the untold billions, he has elected one, you, that we can literally zakha, you remember Hashirat, it becomes memorialized in our minds. There are no obstacles that will uh, prevent us from operating in uh, the commands of Yah on this day that we come to Shekha to fall before him to sing the songs of beauty of his name and the power of the excellence of his name Yeshua HaMashiach and so what a great blessing and a great privilege and this Shabbaton and you that have joined us by via the live uh, visual video stream and you that are listening on the live audio stream we greet you all here from Tershua community and the blessed name of the only assurance the name of Yoshua Hamashiach for that is the name of our Yashiach our Nasa we are delivered we are set free we are made free we are brought into the bosom of the fellowship of Almighty Yah. Once we begin to acquire and ascertain, to keep in our minds the power of that, then our rejoicing, as our Akshimri pointed out to us, will become more exciting. It will be more fulfilled. It will be more deliberate. It will be more spontaneous. And what a great blessing. I rejoice, Yisrael. I rejoice with you that are gathered in your homes to be with this fellowship on this Shabbat. I rejoice with you wherever you are, for it is a great blessing to be alive that you are granted unto you to come before him this Shabbat and to acknowledge that he is almighty, he is all-powerful, and there is none like him. I have nothing to mutter, to murmur, to complain. I have nothing to oppose all things that Yah has ordained for my life, that he may perfect the power of his calling in me. I will not complain. I will not utter a false accusation against him to ask, why me? I know why it is me. I know why it is you. Because uh, he has elected you of his own choosing and appeal. And what a great election that is. I will not trade it all for all the riches of the Olam. For all those things that will perish and they will mount to nothing. I will not trade that for all of the substance of this earth for there is no greater calling than to be called a son a being child one of the elect the children of yah there is no greater calling and irregardless of the opposition the battles 
I will not allow anything to discourage me from the way that Yah has ordained uh, for me, for you specifically, uh, for our lives, Yisra'ya. For we know that everything that He allows, it works together. For the Tav of Yah, and not only His Tav, but for your Tav uh, and your excellence, uh, you have the power to endure because there's a great fervor of a chava for the Abba. Your love is sincere. And it's not pr promoted by fleshly desires and passion. It is sincere. It is motivated by the testimony and the power of Yahshua HaMashiach. Because Almighty Yahweh has made him real in our bosom. For it is a testimony of light that shines when all darkness encamp about us. When it seems as though that we are so fragile and so feeble, our needs are, are weak. Uh, there is no substance of assurance in our own bosom to press on. Uh, it is the reminder of that sure word. Uh, that keeps the nation of Yisra'ya even in the wilderness pressing on uh, to the next boundary as the elders would say in my days uh, to higher heights and to the depths that are unknown to the mind of man uh, they're only known to the mind of Yoshua HaMashiach uh, and we will begin to drink from that well from the depths uh, of the substance of that living water, we shall see the wellspring of life that shall flow from the bosom of Israel. Then truly shall we be a light and a city, an oasis for those that are weary, for those that are walking through a dry land without any comfort at all. So I rejoice. Before I was ever created in the womb of my Ima, he elected you. Yet there were those that proceeded before you and came after you, he elected you. And although you may have not identified yourself as the choices of the choice, you were the choices of the choice of his election. He did not inspect us or Ra'a according to the conscience of man. He saw something, uh, the power of his uh, truth that he has written in your bosom. Huh? greater than what the mind could expect or, or inspect and retrieve from you. He saw something that was greater than all of the afflictions and trials that we would endure for the name's sake of our Abba and for the power of the excellence of Yahshua HaMashiach that he has formed in us all. As an Ema travail with child in a bosom. That is the power of the travailing of Yoshua being formed in our bellies, Yisraya. He must be formed. He must be shapen. And when he is formed and shapen, he will cause the living substance of Torah to flow from us as never before. So allow him to be formed and shaped in us. Allow him. In the process of that we must shemach. We must hear with faithful obedience unto Yah. But the love to obey. But the love to satisfy him above all things. Regardless to what the world offers you, Yisrael. It is temporal. It is but for a moment. Almighty Yahweh is going to eviscerate, to destroy 
without any residue of identity what he has destroyed. When he begins to operate in his Ebra, his wrath, that is beyond the capability of man and all of his descriptive, analyzing, analytical approach to convey that to us with superlatives, and adjectives, and verbs to express that Ibra of Yah, it cannot be done. So with us as Yisra'ah, it calls us in its simplicity to Yari, to fear, our Abbas. We know that it is a terrible thing to fall into his iyat, into the hands of the living creator. And what he has commanded us to do, it is not difficult. If we would only impel, destroy, to totally eviscerate, to annihilate, to bring it down to the subtleties of hell. If we would only impel the spirit that guides us and leads us. And in the process of that, we destroy the nature of the element of the flesh where you have given life uh, to that vile thing uh, that transgresses the Torah of Yah and defy the power of his kingdom uh, by denouncing his name. Were we not all aroused on Khatve Imans? I was. And the things that we leave undone, not recognizing, realizing the snares that have entrapped us. I said to his avat, you have done an excellent job. He wanted to defer that. No, he has. Because the strength of maturity that comes or that is bestowed upon any man. It is the power, and I don't give a damn how his father lived, what kind of life he operated in. It doesn't mean a damn thing. But the strength of character must come from one that is visibly associated with that one. It is the subtleties of the little things uh, that the avat thinks the son, the daughter hears not, and yet their minds lay hold on to that. And it grasps hold on to that. And it lays the foundation that is untempered. Although that one may defy the rules and defy the laws, there is a strength that always brings that one back to the foundation whereby he was birthed and nurtured from. And it was in that house, not in this house, but that house, whereby the nurturing, the principles uh, began to ferment, began to display, and the order of that was carried out. So in all things, we give your daughter for his excellence. And for the power that he exemplifies and make known unto us in Yisra'ah. For there is a plethora of great wealth among this small gathering here. You that are gathered and joined with us on this Shabbat. And because of our own will to inhibit, then as the old saying, the old Proverbs, we, we miss the boats. And so we cannot sail abroad. We cannot see the breadth, the depths, the magnitude of the one that we serve. 
that we are his abet ava dim those that are faithful and loyal and kind i must say and i don't like to speak of the beauty of many because we tend to get crazy but i can say faithfully as a young lad that this man has always been faithful to me he has always as granny would say stood by my side he has and i don't say that to exalt him above anyone because i'm the same one that will break his kneecaps and reduce what he perceived as strength down to the fledgling putrefying state that flesh operates in and if that is above our heads i will simply break his back how about that and i don't back down i don't i will stand in the torah did he not exalt us to do that and i shall i want to begin the teaching today i'm glad to be home yisrael you know it's one thing that i met this precious individual that he was an engineer there and he worked for the hyatt's corporation and he came into the banquet room early that shabbat morning as i was preparing and i know we talked at least 45 minutes minimum to an hour very knowledgeable man also he says to me i know you said you don't travel much and i don't he said but anytime you want to travel here is my card he gave me two you call and i will make the arrangement for you don't ever worry about that i will take care of you he was there that morning we were discussing torah very sharp individual he was abreast aware of much that's in the torah because the individual that he listens to in cincinnati and i informed him i certainly would love to meet the messenger of that group gathering or organization but he was very kind very professional if i must use that expression and even though through all of that i said to him as i said to us as my isha and i go as soon as i get to a place i am ready to come home now that's the honest truth with me you may be different but not so with me i love my home here and i love being at home i love working and all i'm doing with her is pondering the events of the week that i will do the things that i must get done within a certain period of time and i'm refreshing that in my mind i am speaking to her as to what things trying to not only quantify or understand the quantity of what i must do but make sure that every second of that day is measured that i will accomplish it and i was able to do that on the second day as i began the labor here and the third day to get done those things that gave me more satisfaction than driving because i get no satisfaction out of driving that is why 10 i know that i would take the zakhin in the past but i like to go with my issue because there are times on the way home i did not stop for the first 200 miles i was a third of the way home and i like to travel 200 250 miles as long as she is asleep i can do that and then there are other activities that i can perform there that can allow me to continue the process without wasting time 
So I like to do that. We greet you all again, Yisraya. I'm glad to be home. Ach, Mikhaya, his isha, Mikhaya, ya, Mikhaya, la, uh, and our Ahut Ross. They were very kind, plenty of food for those that did not come. And for those of us that were there, it was a great fellowship. It was a wonderful time, just very pleasant, very comfortable. And I enjoyed just been in the home of Ach Mikhaya, his home, uh, with his Isha, uh, uh, with his son, uh, uh, and all of the great beauty of their fellowship and kindness. And I must confess, I haven't confessed yet as to how I ate, and I did. I had not eaten eggs in a long time, so I had some eggs and I stopped with Ach Mikhaya. we went to Costco and they had not I intended for my Ishal to get some of that cheese to make sure that this is hot enough for her they did not have habanero uh, pepper was that habanero oh they did not have jalapeno. So I had given this individual some jalapeno cheese, and they said it wasn't hot enough. But I know that this habanera, when I saw that, I got 10 blocks for us here. And of course, I left a block with Achmikaya. And as he sliced into that, I said, give me some of that. We will not discuss the carrot cake and certainly not the chocolate chip cookies. For those that worked at the service desk, I gave them cookies. And this individual by the name of Kelvin, I gave cookies. I said, try some of these. Because you find many times, especially people that work in that environment, they are somewhat treated harsh, especially the women that clean the room. I have the utmost regard for them because I know their situations are difficult. I don't go to restaurants to tip, so I always leave a wonderful tip for those that will clean up after me. I always do that. I always do that. Because I know the difficulties of their lives and the hours of the day are long. And then those that employ them, that hotel that we were in, it is owned by Goldman and Sach. That's who it is owned by. And so it is simply the rich are getting richer. And they're robbing those that the Torah call the Dal or the only they are poor and ruach. they have no substance of this life what we call riches they are easily broken because they are fragile they are intimidated by those that have the power to yield such authority over them because they simply do not give a damn now those are the ones I don't give a damn about. Because I'm not a man of substance. You're not going to do that to them. Not in my presence. And I have an appeal and an appearance that many times that alone and my look is intimidating enough. It is simply the truth. You don't have to buy it. But it is the truth that shows us the weakness of this thing we call flesh. That thinks that it is strong. Because my dependency is not upon this world. It's upon the knowledge of this truth. I want to continue. I know that during the course of the weeks as we have uh, the process of teaching 
from Giliana, Revelation chapter 13. What shall be the events that shall come upon, not just upon the old lamb, the heavens and the surrounding bodies, but it shall prevail upon the erect, the entire earth, that every spear of the earth shall be covered. Because man has polluted everything, the agenda of the wicked. It is so vile, so impugnant, and so corrupt. I was reading this morning how that the Olympics or the telecasting of that, it is one of the most fruitile times to introduce new kinds of programs to the masses and the minds of the people. And so NBC has this program that uh, it is the ultimate of dysfunctionality as to what we call families. The men are pregnant and carrying the child. The women are verbose, and vile, and repugnant. And the men are nothing but gala. A pile of raw, I will not say the word shits, but that's what they are, gala. And so this is the image and the constitution, no? and how they are trying to format this vile agenda, not only in your mind, but the minds of your little ones. And they're seeding this vile repugnance wicked mess in their minds what about the agenda of these gala their faggots their dogs and this freak that writes me all the time because i talk against faggots is because he is a formal faggot he writes and tell me he's praying for you all uh, 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 and i am a most pitiful individual his words don't even mean a damn thing. But they are the spirit of Gilna, the dung, the waste. That they're trying to put this waste in the minds of your children. To prepare them for the acceptance of this kingdom rule that shall be. It is already in the earth, Israel, as Eob says... That the Olam is given, it is not found, it is granted uh, into the hands of the Rasha, the wicked. Those that defy Torah. Those that reject the knowledge and the power of Yah. And yet there is a disdain for Yoshua, Hamashiach. And because of that there shall arise a kingdom. It is the kingdom of death as Hashatan said to Yoshua, this is delivered unto me. And we can think that the conversation was one of what we call respectful. If we could write all of the aspects of that in the book, there would not be room enough in the book to contain it. So Yah gives us a synopsis of what transpired. That as he empowered the messengers, men of Yah, that they will bring forth the revelation, open our eyes and our minds to understand, to inspect things, to inspect, to have insight, not according to our feeble logics, but according to the mind of Yahshua HaMashiach. That's why when Yah speak, when He speaks unto us, it's over our head. Because we're trying to grasp, we're trying to inspect with a mind that is filthy, is dirty, is wicked, the snares of our own mind have drawn us away from the purity of Yah's imat. And so we are trying to do an analytical process through one of the most corrupt things 
that is in man. For the love, the mind, the love is deceitful above all things, and it is desperately, it is desperately. Do you understand the analogy of that when one is desperate? One will do whatever it takes to acquire, to get what one has set one's affection upon. And the love is desperately violent against you. It is desperately wicked. So you cannot analyze Torah. You cannot get perception of the speech of a messenger without having the mind of Yeshua HaMashiach. Without having the true mind. The mind that loves Torah. The mind that loves the name of Almighty Yahweh. And not despise it. That is the only way. So we have this generation of Naha boys and little girls. Are trying to process such profound truth through ignorance of their simpleton, evil, silly, stupid ways. It doesn't come that way. That's why men that are called to be zakhin as an order to their lives, there's a regard to their lives, their children, their homes. It must be that way. Or it doesn't qualify before Almighty Yah. And I frankly don't give a damn what one what we, I, think. It has no relevance to Yah. That is why this kingdom, it is rising up from within. It's not greedy, it's the power that is in us. It's not the knowledge of Torah. The testimony of Yahshua, is it in us? And the power of this kingdom, it rises from within. That's why we must constantly guard ourselves, our minds. As Akshimbri was instructing us, the nature of a fool or an angry man. And those that are frauds, we have no regard toward Almighty Yahweh. And so the power of this kingdom, it shall rise from within. It is a kingdom that has one purpose, and that is to assault, insult, and to bring the attack against the kingdom of the living power of that birth that has been formed within the bosom of Yisra'ya, and that is uh, that the bringing forth of Yoshua HaMashiach. And although there are things that we read in the Torah, it may have a metaphor. It is spoken unto us in the sense of, of an analogy, but it has reality to it, Yisra'ah. We must understand that it takes wise men as they lahach, as they labor in the Torah. As they set their minds upon the things that are above the earth. And those things that are not sensual. They began to grasp. They began to understand. They began to hear the hearing of even the simple that we perceive that is not wise. It begins to galvanize, to make strong. That what Yah has put in us and He has written, He has had time, is to run in the most inward parts of secretiveness in man. And that's a fact. Shall we be able to redeem, to nassal ourselves? Is it going to be done with silver and gold? Can I say this before I proceed? That these vile, wicked liars, 
The tongue is the tongue, the lotion, the law. It shines the Torah, lotion. The tongues are the instruments of darkness and hell. The mouth speaks shecher, lies, deceit, and falsehood because uh, it is the power of the kingdom that is within. And if whatever melchutza, kingdom, power, government, authority, that rules from the depths of within, then one speaks by the mandate of the magistrate, what has been uh, lawfully uh, expressed, uh, one speaks by that concept uh, of that kingdom, Yisrael. We have these children of hell. They're selling out Yeshua for a damn Jesus, for silver and gold. And they're telling the people to buy silver, that that shall be your polak. It shall bring security. It shall deliver you from the great Sarah. And the culmination of that is Chayam, Yah, the day of Yah, which is of a tremendous ferocious uh, ebra, a wrath that is uncontrollable. It is a wrath that is arrogant. It is an overpouring, an overkill. Have you ever heard that expression, that's an overkill? If one runs upon a poisonous snake, it is an overkill. They beat the head, where by the head there is nothing left there. And they beat it some more, and they beat it some more, they beat it some more, they cut it up, uh, and they beat what they've cut up some more. And that is what the Ebra of Yahid, it is what we call an overkill. It is beyond exaggeration, it is beyond, so who, who can stand in the day of Yah's wrath? Woe unto us all that desire the day, Chayam. Of Yaz Ibra. Woe unto us. For there is no day like it. It is a day that every similitude, every small smidget of the kingdom of hell shall be eviscerated. It shall be destroyed. It shall be annihilated. There shall not even be any memory in the minds of those through much. Sarah, through much tribulation, through many straits, through much traveling, through much sitting in your sack, your sackcloth, we shall prevail to overcome this onslaught of hell, to raise up a kingdom within the bosom of man, to resist your, that's why, these gala, I will never call them a fag again. I will call them gala, which is dung. That's what they are. They love dung. They're dung eaters. Raising up this institution of darkness. And I'm not some little weak, effeminate man. In these that have no substance of Yah's power, that will speak uh, as though that one is self prophesying smooth things. I will not speak that way. You can. I will not. I will not. This kingdom is raised up for one purpose to show the prevailing power of Yah that uh, through it all, Yisraya shall prevail. And understanding that, then it ought to cause us to emphasize uh, his name, his son, the beauty uh, of his kingdom that we can literally skip and sing all the day long. Uh, through trials, through afflictions, we can do that. So out of the midst of this debacle throughout the nations of the earth, uh, we find this lie that is being purported uh, 
to tell the people and these lying, shiftless, they are the man zeer, they are bastards. They have no knowledge of the Torah or the power of Yah. They are putting this extra extreme weight upon those that are dull, those that are poor. Tell me, Yisraya, how does a woman there in the city of New York has a propensity and a great love for Yah? She finds herself lonely, one there in the Calcutta. One in Iran, Iraq, and Russia. We can pick any nation. She has children through her ignorance and through the loss of her flesh. It's taken not all she has to even live. And she is really not living. It takes all of her substance to put bread on the table. And you put upon her weight she cannot. You must buy silver and you must buy gold. You put a burden that one of the most inexpensive forms of protein of meat she can buy is chicken. That's all we ate when I was a kid, chicken. You tell her that it is an unclean thing. You are a child of your damnable wicked father, Hashatan. You are a child of hell, you are a vile thing. And you add this extra burden upon one. We can't even buy gas. How do you buy silver? As though this is what going to redeem us. Yet it was about the power of that alluring attraction to Kesef, silver, that which is a precious metal, that they sold out or that one of perdition sold out Yoshua HaMashiach. These are sellouts. These are men and women of perdition. That's why they're telling you to buy truth. You're not going to ascertain the truth of Yah with silver or gold. They're telling you to buy silver and gold. I'm telling you to buy truth. You buy the truth of Yah. You buy the wisdom, the understanding of Yah and you sell it not we need the da'at the understanding of yah that we can discern that is what da'at is it is the profound uh, amalgamation of the mission of wisdom understanding uh, and the fear of yah all of the seven ru'achim of yah that it brings about this ability this power to discern all things you know whether this man is of yah you know whether this bath is false and wicked. You know that. Yet we have the shallow, insecure, weaklings of fledglings today that will not stand for the kingdom. Damn the kingdoms of this world. Damn them all. They are all of one government. And the government of all of them are wicked. The government of all of them are wicked. They defy Torah. They, de they despise the dead, the poor, the only, uh, those that are of no rich, what they call heritage. But we have a great rich heritage, which is in Yoshua HaMashiach. No man is able to buy or to sell. Has that anything to do with bread? It has nothing, ma'ach Yosepia, nothing. If these men believe a third of what they think they believe, in 1986, there was one of the most powerful destructive forces that took place uh, in a little town called Priyat, Ukraine. Ukraine at that time, you know, it was what they call the Soviet Union. Ukraine, all of those countries were a part uh, of the social scholastic system of that time. But in 1986, there was a little town called Priyats. Twelve miles from that town, there was a city called Chernobyl. You have heard of it? It was when one of the reactors, when uh, 7,000 people worked at Chernobyl.
So at that time, they wanted to test one of the reactors to see if they could save energy. And so about 1.30 a.m. that morning, May the 6th, 1986, while the people in Priyats and, and the surrounding cities are asleep, they fired up one of the reactors to try a process and the whole earth underneath them shook. Hear me. And the fire of that fusion and fission of those chemicals that man has defied Yah because of his wickedness he's against Yah. It began to burn. And the people didn't even know. And those that they sent in, they died by the thousands. The measurement of what they call the rungents were beyond the ability for the body of man to induce. I'm saying that to say this. And the greatest fear was the explosion of the second reactor. The little town of Priots, around 40,000, 50,000 people, a beautiful town. It is a desolate place today. Overnight, they moved the people out, telling them do not take anything. And the town, that region, will not be inhabited for 200,000 years for that to dissipate. Listen, just a nuclear fallout from the ashes. Everything around Priyat, around Russia, all in the northern hemisphere, all the forests, was just like what this wicked nation did to Vietnam. The foliage, everything died. But they're telling you to buy gold and silver. I want you to hear this. The Russians were not even aware of what had taken place. It was only in Sweden, and if you look at the map, you will see Russia and Sweden, Finland and Norway, look clove like a leaf of a nation, they're together. And they did not even know the people in Priots, the people in Ukraine, the people in Russia, even Gorbachev didn't even know what was taking place. Because it was so secretive, they hid it from the people. And it was only when Sweden, began because the nuclear fallout was so great and so devastating. Around Priyat, hundreds of miles, nothing is inhabited. Let me pause there for a moment. I remember in my juvenile, and I'm still juvenile days, Evangelist Hartsfield told me of a story of a historical event. There was a group of islands called the Manimian Islands where they would practice and explode nuclear bombs to test them. He said, it's nothing but a desolate place. No life, nothing, not even a bug lives there. I want to show us something. Nothing there. So within a parameter of Priyat, there is nothing there. Death. No living life, not even plants. The trees don't live. Do you hear me? And if the second reactor had exploded, then half of Europe, just the second reactor, which one of the nuclear reactors exploding, it would have my bath been more devastating than a thousand bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The devastation. But they're telling you to buy silver and to buy gold. But yet they believe that the nuclear armaments are going to be used. Half of Europe would have been inhabitable. It would have been uninhabitable. No one could live for the minimum of 200 thousand years because a natural body that's deadly death can only take about five rungents a year that is the equivalent of measurement 
of how much of that like milligrams that our bodies are induced with. Would you say this, that I'm going to preach, I am preaching. The sores that were, and the burning, not like one getting third degree burns, the burns my heart burnt all the way to the bones of those individuals. Now this is a wicked nation we have, with nearly 10,000 nuclear warheads, this nation and Russia. This is not like what dropped on Hiroshima. This is not what I dropped on Nakhastrache. You're dealing with a madness of a mind that is vengeful, that is wicked, that is a sociopathic mindset, that desire the power of supremacy and no one else beside me. And so these devils of the kingdom of hell are telling the little poor mother to buy silver. I tell you, my Ima, buy Imona, buy confidence in Yah, buy what this truth tells you, and don't sell it. Don't sell it as an auction report out for your daughter. Don't sell it for your son. Don't sell it for your mama. And don't give a damn who it is. Don't sell it for them. You buy this. You buy the message that this messenger of God declares unto you. You tell me just one reactor that would have brought such devastation upon the total of Europe. Half would have been uninhabitable. Another third would have been so saturated with the soil, with the with the rain, with the dust of the nuclear particles, that everything you ate would have killed you. And the other third would have been so condensed, or the half of that half, so condensed that lifestyle would have been one of the most putrefying, one of the most senseless forms of life that one could live. I wanted to inject that. Because of the lies that these bastards, they are mamzies, they are children of hell. They have been birthed by a spirit of darkness. That's telling people to buy gold, to buy silver. As that, though that shall be their poor lot. That shall be the strength to bring them out from under the great agony of tyranny of hell. Uh, that shall prevail upon the face of the earth. This is Yah's plan. He has ordained this and no one is going to escape but those whose names are written in the Lamb's book or, or the safe uh, in the heart of safekeeping uh, in the bosom of Yorkshire Hamashiach. Yeah. The safe uh, of the kingdom of Yah is not uh, like the writing of the books that we read. Uh, it is imprinted in the mind of Yah and Yorkshire is the living mind of Almighty Yah. So there will be no challenge to that. Everything is right. Everything is right. There's not one error at all, Israel. They're compelling and forcing those that are barely making it to buy silver. You're wrong, bastard. You're wrong, you dirty bastard. You're wrong, you dirty bastard. I will not apologize. I'm not afraid to say what I say. These are dirty bastards. Nyakahan saw a vision that was beyond expressive superlatives to, to give us wisdom and vision of what shall be. That's why in the book of Gilgana, it is always somewhat of this mystery that most people uh, do not even like to indulge in. They can read it for some insight as to a simplicity of what is being read, but they don't understand the very ruach of this. I want to begin here as we continue this process through Revelation 13. There is a lot of 
knowledge here in this one chapter. And I'm not going to stop teaching, preaching, declaring from this until I finish this. We have the ark that can teach us as we were taught on Khadve Imat and the snares we got. So we have these ach that can bring out things that will cause you to shout a little more and to sing a little louder. But this is getting down to the nitty gritty. This is getting down where the metal meets the road, where the rubber meets the road. So this messenger of Yah that he was rejected, his words did not find a place in the heart of this wicked generation. And a true messenger of Yah, his words would not find solace in the heart of this wicked generation. And so the only way he could honor the very power and the magnitude of what was were being revealed unto him, he had to speak in metaphors. He had to speak uh, in, in formulations of words to characterize the dimension and the power of this that he saw rising up. And what is rising up out of man? Every kind of vile wickedness. Everything against Yah. Shemachor Yisrael Yah is Ichach. One. So what is rising up out of the depths of our laba, our minds, our laugh, our hearts? And he saw this powerful entity that was beyond the ability to just write in descriptive analogy that we would understand even, uh, even in our linguists, our linguistics, our speech. A vernacular. So he had to speak in a mystery that shall be revealed in these times unto those that are truly dedicated, unto those that Yah has elected before Yeremiah was formed in his Ima womb. He was elected. He was charged of Yah to be a messenger, a nobi, for that time and for the time that we are in. I want you to hear this. We cannot sell your sure out for some damn silver. That you think that this should be your strength of deliverance. When you're hungry, you can go buy. That is so stupid. You understand that. Who are you going to buy from when the kingdom has become the kingdom of demons, shodim, devils, it becomes the full manifestation of the power of hell. Who are you going to trust? There's only one thing we're going to trust, and that is the assurance of the power of the testimony of Yah. And that testimony is your sure Hamashiach. As he overcame death and all the obstacles and all the vile nature of Hashan, the very trying of the very nature of this bazaar, this flesh, he overcame. He said, the kingdoms don't mean a damn thing to me. He said, my life does not consist of bread and the beauty of these kingdoms. He said, my life is the mandate by the mandate, did it command the Sava, the instructions of Yah, to live by Torah. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by kul, every, as a Zachin, Yeremiah constantly tries uh, to embrace that in our minds, Yisra'ya, but by every dabari, all the words that comes out of the fifth. The utterance, the language, the tongue of Almighty Yahweh. That's what we live by. You don't live by some damn silver being secured. These men are not even jackasses. A jackass will plow the field. A jackass will warn you when the wolf comes. A jackass will cause the wolf to run. That's a fact. You get your donkey, you get your ass, put him in the field with your goats and your sheep. You don't have to worry about wolves, bobcats, 
It is truth. They're not even a decent jackass. And they're putting this added pressure upon the, even the doll, the poor. We are the poor we live. We are the ones that have been justified by Yah. In the body of the testament of Yahshua, we live by Imuna. We are the doll. We're going to inherit it, uh, the kingdom of Almighty Yah Yisraya. He sees this great sarcophagus, this building, this giant that covered the whole earth. He saw this, this sarcophagus. He saw this monumental thing that rose up out of the sea of the masses of the people. And he gives us expression of what he sees here in Revelation. I'm going to finish up today, don't worry. Giliana, Revelation chapter 13, he says... Uh, he says, and I stood, verse 1, he says, I stood upon the sign of the seas of the yam, of the masses of the multitude of people. I stood in the midst, I could see them, I could see the expression, and he utilizes what Yah calls yam, the Red Sea. I stood upon that sea, the same place where Yah took the mighty army of Pharaoh down to the depths of the sea. He said, I stood there with great excitement, with fear. I know it doesn't say that, but he did. Because he was thrust into a realm that no other man had been thrust in like him. He could only draw back on what Hanak said and Yesha. He could only draw back on those men. You understand? For his eyes has seen the revelation of this truth uh, in Yahshua HaMashiach. Uh, and now Yah speaks to him in a way that is so profound uh, that it must be sealed up until the time that it is revealed. Uh, and this is only revealed unto those uh, that Yah has entrusted. That's a fact. I don't give a damn if you don't like it. You can think you're special, you're not special. Yisraya is special to you. He said, and I saw this tanin, this beast. I saw this powerful entity, this beast, or this government, this mindset that had been formed. The snare that had been laid in the bosom of man like a nut for every unclean bird and every unclean spirit. I saw this thing rise up out of the multitude and the magnitude of the people out of the sea. He gives us a descriptive analogy of this kingdom power. And I will get into the significance of that detail as I teach. I will cover it all. Believe me. He said this kingdom had seven heads. And I brought that out to our attention. I believe on the last time I spoke to contend with the seven Ruachim of Almighty Yah. It was a kingdom of seven heads. And it had ten horns, kingdoms, and powerful entities. Because we know that uh, the, the, the house of Ephraim, of Yisraya, it consists of ten tribes. And the tribe of Yehuda, Yehuda and Benjamin, uh, they consist of two tribes. Uh, and so there is a kingdom uh, that is set forth uh, to identify every zero, every seed of Yisraya, Yisraya. And that's what the enemy is doing today. That's why it's causing our minds to be given over unto every kind of folly and foolishness and wickedness, Israel. That we gravitate to things that are senseless and that are immature. We love laughter more than we love crying. This is not the time to laugh. It is the time to weep. For the bath that is high on to weep between the altars of Yah. For the men of Yah, the strength uh, of, of the head of Yahshua HaMashiach. That's what Ramad is. Here's the strength, here's the validity, here's the validity, the, 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 the validity uh, of the strength of Yahshua HaMashiach. Here's the power of his rulership in his mind. We found a bunch of fledgling boys today. And I don't take it back, Israel. 
They have no strength. They're not the Gabor. They're not Gabor. They're not valiant warriors to fight with distinct honor. They're weak and fledgling. They easily overcome. The weak boys. They have no strength of character. None whatsoever. They're emotionally driven. The emotions rape their minds because they think highly of themselves. I'm not worth a damn thing, neither is you. It is simply because neither are any of you. No, I say like that, neither is you. Because neither is the subject is. We, we, none of us is worth a damn thing. It's only by the election of you because uh, as far as your flesh, there is nothing that is tough that dwells there. And for you to esteem yourself, that's why we ought to be able to esteem others. Because when we look on the, we look on the putrefied nature of ourselves, I say, Yah, bless you for this ark. Bless you for this hota. We esteem others more highly than ourselves. He says, so this entity of hell risen up. It was raised up the war against the very identity of Yah's great love. He loves Yisra'ya. He will always love Yisra'ya. They are his elect. They are his people. He's going to save Yoshiach. All Yisra'ya. His whole house. He's going to save Ephraim. He's going to save Yehuda. He's going to save his whole house. Yisra'ya. And they shall be Icha. They shall be one. In the power of the testimony of Yeshua. And in the power of that testimony of Yeshua. They shall not have to go and look and peer upon what the Torah says. It shall flow from the depths of our bosom. And we will do right by one another. Zark Shimri said we won't have to have, try to hide to get by or get out. But do us sadiq. What's of the nature of Yah? What's of the character of Yah? We will do that. I saw this entity of hell rise up for one purpose, and that is to bring down, that is to desecrate, to destroy any identity of the house of Yisrael. That's why when we meet an ark, it ought to be a great fervor of excitement. When you see your heart every day, it ought to cause your heart to rejoice. We can sit with the wicked and fellowship with them. We have no fellowship with the Sadiq. What a damn wickedness. I am always glad to get home. And that's what I began to say after one or two hours where I am, I'm ready to go home. But I know that it is the righteous thing for me to come, to be here. Just if it's not but for the few. Hallelujah. He said, I saw this kingdom rise up and upon the head, the name Hashem, he said it was the name of blasphemy, a name that deride, that disregarded Yah, that this name of Jesus Christ, Jesus Zeus, has been risen to the pinnacle of the head of all men today. They love that damn lie. He said, I saw a kingdom that had been raised up by the will of Yah, by the mandate of Yah, by the instructions of his Torah, Yoshua HaMashiach, and one that he had given supreme power, and his name is Hoshotan, and he comes to blaspheme the name of the Most High, to ridicule, to denounce, say that in that name, you cannot be delivered. There's only one way you're going to be delivered. You must take upon yourself the name. You must take upon yourself the mark of the name of the beast. You must take upon yourself the name of his, or the number of his name. You will not be able to buy, you will not be able to redeem yourself. There will be no kinsman redeemer. Because his words, when he speak, it shall be so. Isn't it so in this nation? When this nation said, we're going to bomb a nation, all the nations of the earth can, can rally against that, but yet they still bomb, do they not? 
You don't hear anything about Libya in the news today, do you? You don't hear anything about Egypt in the news today, do you? All you hear now is Syria. And yet those countries are dilapidated. The government, there is no government. And so what a nation like this does, takes the cronies uh, like a faggot nation like Britain. Uh, this is beyond faggotism in this nation. You got to come out from under the auspice of this nation. Uh. You must allow the power of Yah's Torah to rule in your mind. Uh, your government must be from above, Yisrael. Yeah. We are pilgrims in this life. We're passing through. Uh, this is not our home. Uh. You take an effeminate fucking nation like Britain uh, and France. Uh, you command them to bomb nations and they do it. Uh, and they talk about bullying in this nation. This nation is a bully. You ought to be a mad fight someone that you're fearful of. Uh, I recall Muhammad Ali, his statement, he said, uh, he said this, quote, in his career as a boxer, you all that are young don't recall the men that he boxed. I do. Men like Ken Norton, you may have heard of the Joe Frazier. Men like that, you, you, you don't recall, I, I recall foremen, those kinds of men, big men, they were strong men. He be, beat those like Patterson and all of them, they were nothing to him because Muhammad Ali was a big man, six foot three, 220 pounds, 224 pounds. But he made this statement, quote, no big man is afraid of another big man. In order for me to get an advantage, you got to talk like you're a crazy big man. So I talk like I'm crazy. Unquote. Or if a big man realizes there's a crazy big man, he, he tends to move away from him. He doesn't want to mess with a big man that he knows that's crazy. Man, that man is a fool. He's crazy. He packs and you, you, you better be right. If you say something to him, you're in trouble. I'm using that as an analysis. This nation always picks on the dead, the small, that have no armament like she has. Egypt has no nuclear bombs. Libya had none. And their armaments they have bought from Russia, from China, or the United Snakes of Hashotan. This nation. And they do not sell them things that will compete with them on the battlefield. The only thing those nations have that this nation doesn't possess uh, is there is a willing of the people because of nationalism uh, or tribalism. And they're willing to die. That's why if they go into Iran, it's not going to be like Iraq. I saw a clip one time, even the faggots in Iran say, we will fight for our motherland. Uh, although we are persecuted here, and although they will come against us, don't let America drop bombs on us. We will fight. Even the faggots said they will fight. There's a nationalism and tribalism that is beyond this. This is an amalgamation of every kind of damn twisted mindset that one can, one can even generate. Those countries, they have customs and cultures that go back thousands of years. And that has been the strength of their family life and their unity of community. We don't have a damn thing here. That's why Yah kept Yisra, Yah, when he, wherever he scattered them, he kept them segregated from the masses. Sure he did. I'm going to preach. And so this kingdom rise up with one mandate. That is to dethrone the name of Yah. That is to override the power of Yahshua HaMashiach. That is to denigrate. That is to break down to destroy, to eviscerate everything uh, that is of Torah, revelation, of knowledge. Uh, and don't forget about those Naviim, the prophets of Ola. Uh, let it be as though their messages, uh, their messages of, of irrelevance. It is of no value, but that's a lie from hell. Uh. That's what these devils are telling folks uh, by silver, by gold. Revelation 13, 17, uh, it says that no man shall be able uh, to uh, cannot. No man will have the power to create any redeeming power of his own. We're redeemed by the dam of Yahshua. We have not been redeemed by silver and gold and corruptible things. Uh, 
But we have been redeemed by the dam. Yisrael Yah was always redeemed by the offering of the dam. And now these bastards are telling you, these mamzies, that we are going to buy silver. They sold your shoe out for 30 pieces of silver. You buy silver, this is your power to be redeemed under the very day of Yah's wrath. That's not so, Yisrael Yah. It is not so. The day of Yah's wrath is to eviscerate every kind of sign, every kind of smidgen of the powers of hell that the kingdom of your sure and restoration shall be in the earth. That's why through all of this Sarah, through all the trials and tribulation, it comes the time of the day of Yah. The day of his mandate. The day of reconciling. Give it up. I gave you life, what did you give me? You cursed me. You cannot, you spoke and anathema against me. He doesn't see us. Who is this Yahweh? He means nothing to me. Oh, I know he says this, but I do what I want to. Yah says, damn you. Damn you in your house. We don't want to hear it like that. We like these jelly roll men today that love Tootsie Rose. Ducking donuts and jelly roll donuts. They love the clown. I will come on, man. They love the clown and Josh. The jocularity, the fertile statements. Damn them all. Damn them all. To take the people of Yah into bondage, their minds cannot grasp the urgency of Yah's time to move. As in desperation, something is sick in our damn minds. We cannot negate what the Nobi, the prophets, have uttered unto us. We cannot up escape that responsibility to look over it or go around it. We cannot, Yisraeliyah. We must come in at the door. You must come in at the door. How? Does that song go? Come on, Mama, I know you know. Let me hear you. How that go? Who knows that? You always say, You must come in at the door. Oh, that's it. You got to come in at the door. And there's only one door. And that door is the door of truth. You're sure is that door. You're not coming in in the name of Zeus. Baal, Baal. You're not coming in in your Phoenicians, gods. You're not coming in in the name of truth. You're coming in in that name. The power of Yah's name is only found in his Hamashiach. You're sure. I want to shed a little light on this as it says in Gilyana that no man is, might be able to Kana, be able to buy. He will not be able to bring himself to a place whereby there is, uh, there is comfort with Yah. He will not be able to buy. You will not even be able to create in your own mind the comfort of security. No man will be able to buy. You will not be able to acquire the knowledge of protocol that is necessary to manipulate or to go around the very processes of this kingdom that shall rise up. Because all shall be given over unto that kingdom rule. Only those who have the testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach, those that keep the Torah of Yah, those that love not their lives unto the death, they wait for the day of Yah. They wait for that day. They wait for that day whereby His Ebra shall be poured out. These are trials and tribulations that shall try. And no man shall be able to buy that. No man might buy. He will not be able to buy. Neither will he be able to gaal, to sell, to redeem, to buy back. You're not going to be able to buy back time. You're not going to be able to buy strength. You're not going to be able to sell. Your wisdom, your counsel will not be a strength to anyone at all, Yisrael. No man will be able to do that unless or save he that have the mark, he that have the oath, the commitment. 
We must have the mark whose mind, and that mind is a mind that rejects, it, has, it is a mind of dejection by Yah, it is a mind that has rejected the Torah of Yah, it is a mind that despises his name, it is a mind that speaks villainy against the name of Yah, and disregard against his Hamashiach, Yoshua. He said, no man will be able to buy or to sell, unless this man has the mark or the name of the beast, and the number of his name. In a name that blasphemes, that destroys the name of Almighty Yahweh, his son Yeshua, it is the name of the beast. That is the power and the number of his name. And I will get into details concerning the, uh, the numerology of Torah, what it implies, you will understand that in the time to come. Hallelujah. So no man will be able to buy, no man can redeem or, or go to Pilate and say, Pilate, give me. Could anyone redeem Yeshua HaMashiach from the hands of death? No one. Yosef of Amorathia, the only thing he could do, he could go and beg for his body. Because it had to go in the ground before that Shabbat, that day of the Moed of Yah began. Had to. But no one could in course speak for him. Would he look for those to redeem him when, uh, in the agony of all of the pain? Uh, there was no one, those that he had disciplined and taught, those that he imparted the power of his nature into them. Uh, they had all gone. He was left. And no man, until he realized, into thine hand, Abba, I commit. We can commit our hands into some damn silver or some damn gold. This American fiat currency uh, is going down to the grave with you. Uh, it's not going to be able to buy you. The riches of riches, if they have the power, they will never die. If their finances could redeem them. If their finances were their halat, they will never die. So we're coming to the hour. The only thing that's going to bring us through is the assurance of the Torah. So Yah gives us great warning. And I want to read from the depths of two prophets, Nobi, the Navi'im, that speaks to us. From Sophonia to Zephaniah, Zephaniah. I want to begin here in the book of Zephaniah. And follow patiently with me, Yisra. I want you to hear this. Zephaniah chapter 1. And verse 14, I want to begin reading. This is a scenario, an event whereby there is great sorrow, great distress that is approaching because of the day of Mishchashim, the day of judgment, the day of correction. Zephaniah, Zephaniah, Zephaniah chapter 1. And I want to be guided in verse 14, but I would behoove you all to read this entire chapter. I know we frankly do not give a damn about Yah. We got time for everything but yeah. And that's just a fact. Walmart, Dollar Mart, Kmart, but we don't give a damn about our Abba. And that's just the truth. And you that think that you have such an excellent in that, you are deceiving your own self. So take some time and read this whole chapter that you may get enlightened details. I can only, for the time's sake, cover a scenario of it uh, that I believe that is quite valuable in understanding this aspect uh, how Yakahan uttered that no man can buy and these liars that are telling you to buy silver and gold uh, for this shall be your redemption it shall not deliver you it shall not feed you if there are bombs dropped in the cities where and how the land just even the nuclear fallout, the clouds, will cause the earth in this nation to be devastated. Nothing will grow. What are you going to buy? 
We must buy the knowledge of your ma'ach. Hear me. We must buy it now. We cannot be pretenders uh, 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 and soothsayers and false men. We must buy it now. And the knowledge of Yah will always correct you. We are one that despises our ark, put it out to us. We don't want to be judged. It's the matter of a damn fool. Judge me, Yah. Correct me. Correct me, Yah, in your mishpatim. We must be corrected in judgment. That's how the whole scenario is going to play out. It will be judgment. The great day of Yah, the Gadol, Ayam Gadol, Yam Gadol, the great day of Yah, it is a day of judgment. It is a day of retribution. As they would say, it is a day, baby, of payback. Payback is coming. In my day, we will use that. Uh, that was one of uh, some of the phraseology. You know, payday is coming. Payday is coming. Your payday is coming. Payback is going to be a mother. And payback from Yah is beyond that expression. It's going to be death and weeping. It's not funny. There's nothing to be humorous about. You don't even smile at that. Dumb that we become sober. We that are men, we must be sober. And strong. We must be diligent and vigilant about the business of young. The Nobi speaks as he senses, as he sees <clears throat> by the utterance of Yah this time of great judgment. Zophonia and Tisiphania. He is the one whereby Yah has treasured. He had treasured up great treasures in him to speak unto Yisrael. He gives us a picture here in Zephaniah chapter 1 verse 14. He identified this time as the great Gadol. There is nothing that can be compared. And he calls it the great day of the Yam, the time of Almighty Yahweh. And he gives us the urgency of the time. He says, it is Karub. It is Karub. It is near and it is on time. It is near, it is on time. It is in the process of time. Why? Because uh, the day is already in place. Harub. It is in place. It is in place. It's like America as she begins uh, to foment her filth and her guile, uh, as she begins to send her vessels of uh, war into the ocean and put everything in place and then she attacks. Uh, he says, but the day of Yah is Harub. It is a day and a time precisely. It is already in place. It is in the lab of Yah. And nothing is going to alter the date. There is no tarrying, Yisrael. If Yah shall tarry, he is not going to tarry. He says, it is in place. And again, he reminds us. He said, it is already Karub. It is near, Yisrael. It is near. He says, it is a day that's macha. It is a day that hasten. It is a day with anticipation. The day itself is a day of anxiousness. It is an anxious day. It's a day because it's in place. And it says to Yah, Yah, let this day go forth. It is a day that hasteneth. It hasteneth greatly. It says that even the call what speaks of that day, even the voice uh, of the day of Yahweh, it tells us what it speaks. Now this what this day speaks. Hear me. It's a day that speaks in these terms. It is a day that utters, uh, although you don't hear it, but this is what the day says. Uh, it is telling you the attributes of what shall be. The day speaks. Uh, it says, uh, it's a day, uh, he says, uh, that the mighty or the gibor, the men of strength, the men of tenacity, the warring men, the men that fight for Yah, the men that are of great strength. Uh, he says, uh, it is uh, in this day, uh, Yah, he says, uh, the mighty man, those that are warriors, 
Oh, to us that desire the day of Yah. He said the great warriors, the Gibra, the men of strength and great character, mighty men, warriors, not boys, but warriors. Any weapon that comes against them, they have the power and the ability to, to resist and to take down. That's what we need. He said the mighty men, this is what the force of that day cries, uh, that the mighty men, uh, they shall, they shall, sarach, they shall cry. They shall cry with the shrill, the voices. We don't see men crying today, do we? He said, but that day they shall cry. It shall be a shrilling voice that it, it will be so eerie. It shall be shurak. It shall be a cry that no man has ever heard. This is what the day of Yah speaks to us. This is what the day of Yah speaks. Your silver is not going to redeem you or buy you out. No man is going to be able to buy. You're not going to be buy relief from this. You think what a man is shurak, crying with that shrill. He's thinking about eating it. When one is in great agony, they're not thinking about eating. They go for days without that. This is the beguiling of hell. Yeah. You raise up the Nobi, the prophet, the prophets. Raise up the mighty messenger, young men of great strength, uh, tenacity, will. I'm getting old. I know that. I know I'm getting older. And my strength one day shall be abated. It shall, it shall be resolved. I know that. So what do I do as a man? I pour out everything that God gives to me with, 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 with an urgency, with great delight, with a great fervor, with, with, with emotions, uh, and with, uh, with even paramise. And I do it that way to, to show you the fire and the importance of the urgency of time. Not some damn jackass of a clown. He wants to laugh and act like a damn jackass. And thinks because his voice is soft, I will, man, He said, this day shall be a day of Ishabisharach. This crime that's so clearly identifiable that it almost, it, it somewhat irks you in your inward parts because you can't shut it out. You close your ears and it's a day of great travailing and crying. He said, not only that shall the mighty men cry like that. He said, they shall cry there bitterly. He gives us the components of the day in the next verse. You're not going to be able to buy yourself out of this. Your words will not redeem you. There's only one thing, the truth that's in our bosom shall redeem us from this time of agony. He gives us the very dimension and the description of this day in verse 15. He says that it is not just in a day. That yom, that day. It is signified, it is specified what day, the day of Yah. That day, that day, not those days, in those days, no, in that, in that Yom, in that day. He said that day is a day of wrath. It's a day, first of all, of Ebrah. It is a day of pouring out Yah's anger, his aft, his resentment toward a nation, nations that have defiled his people, that have entreated them wickedly, they have done them wrong, that have enslaved them, they have beaten them, they have robbed from their wombs, they're robbing from the wombs of the women today. Damn this Planned Parenthood, they teach you how to be a whore, a damn slut, and you kill a baby. And most of these organizations are ran by these gela, these fags, these pieces of dung to take away the essence of manhood from your son, to make them despise that and want to act like a woman. You are a damn sick creature. Forgive me, Yah, you're not even that. You're Gela. Gela. G A Y hyphen L A L. Gela. Your piece of human dumb. Who wants to play with that? 
children play in mud and all that, but there are things that they're not going to touch. We must get real. And to impose this on the minds of the people to blaspheme the name of Yah, Yah made a man. And he made a woman. And the woman, just like the assembly, the woman, she represents this. That's why she calls her the Ishwar. She represents the door to the opening of a man's heart. I know how the world has robbed the bath of Tizayon. Rob you of your beauty, your strength. That's why he took the rib of man and made the woman. I will teach on that one day. A one of you, Ak, can. She represents, isn't the assembly? Does she not represent the door or the opening of the door unto the bosom of Yah? That's what the issue of, that's why. That's why you see in many narratives she's compared to that. And the world has taken the women and made them some of the most damnable, wretched whores uh, upon the face of the earth. Uh, they prostitute themselves for a damn piece of clothing, uh, for something that is not even valuable, for the strength of their home, their house, uh, for fellowship. They don't frankly give a damn. You find these weak, fledgling, faggot gala of what we call men. And he's supposed to secure the door. He is the one that secures the door. Yeah. I will, my ach. I don't give a damn if no one stands with me. I stand with Yah. I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. And I'm not going to stop saying damn or hell. Damn this wicked America. Prostitute your babies and turn your sons into damn faggots in the schools and teach them damn lies and you raise up against me, you child of hell, damn you as well. You may not have the guts, but I do. Ain't nothing, no, I would say it like this, ain't nothing you can do to me but kill me. And what is death? We all must meet that appointed time. And as that day is appointed, that day for me is appointed. Uh, and there is not a damn thing you can do to hurry it up or to lessen that day. Yeah. That's a fact. Told that yeah. He says a great day of the Ebra, this outpouring, overflowing, excessive nature of Yah. Like he did in the Antediluvian when he destroys. Oh, can you imagine a little beautiful thing like that? And yet the waters of the nostrils and this handsome daddy trying to save. What is he going to save him to? When the fire began to rain in Sodom, mama didn't think about baby in the crib. She ran to save herself. Daddy wasn't thinking about wife. He went that way. There's only one way. The way of Torah. Derecha, the way. The way of your own heart seems right. The way of your own wicked nature seems right, doesn't it? But it brings destruction. You dismantle the mitzvah. The Torah inspiration. As our ark brought out, you allow everything to override. Yeah, but woe unto us. Your damn silver is not going to redeem you. From this, no man will be able to bring your offering unto hell unless you have allegiance with his Christo, his damn Lord Jesus. Damn you, liars, with your damn Lord Jesus. You're not going to be able to buy truth. That's why they can't buy truth today. There's a famine in the land, isn't it? It's not for bread. Hell, we all fat. We greedy as hell. All of us. All of us. Hell, you're greedy as hell. We're not aggressive for the Torah of Yah. We hear men like this on Wednesday. Speak with such passion. You knew it was a a message that was delivered from the heart. This wasn't delivered by no notes and footnotes. 
very aggressive. But yet in all of that, his nature is very passionate. There are things I frankly don't give a damn about. Do you understand what I'm saying when I say that? I have always allowed men, even when I was a young man, to, to have their association. I would do things and allow them to take advantage. And when I say take advantage, because it didn't mean nothing to me because I did this for this one. And, 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 and he blew me off. That was all right by me. And I've always tried to do all I could to make sure that those that were my associates, to make sure that I'll do it right by you. And I still do right by all men. But I would do things for them, and although they would do things against me, I know we all think we did that, but we all did not, all right? But I would do things for them, but yet, when it came time for someone just to be a friend, they were never there. They confined them. And so when I say I don't give a damn, it simply implies I will not allow that or the nature, the character of one, because uh, they resist me, to prevent me or circumvent me from doing what Yah has called and commanded me to do. Yeah. It is the day that cries out unto us, Yisra'ya. It's the day that the voice speaks. It's the day of the Ebra, the outpouring wrath of Yah. He tells us it is a day. Now, identify each aspect and the characteristics of this day. It is the Yom of Sarah, a time of great distress. For the man is in distress, there are people that's in distress of oppression. They don't even worry about eating. They, they are not thinking about some jelly donut. He said, it is the time of Sarah. It is the time of tribulation, of trials. You're going to be brought into a stray. Into a position you can't, there is no one you're going to be able to turn to. We have rejected Yah, we rejected His Hamashiach. We don't turn to Yah in time of great, uh, of great troubles. He said, this day is going to be a day of that. You're not, your goal will not buy you an inroad into the kingdom. Uh, the only thing that you're going to be able to buy is some kind of superficial assurance uh, from this beast that rose up this kingdom power that says we're going to overtake him. We're going to rid him of your mind. That's why you're in the agonist that you're in. Yah keeps those in perfect otomim shalom uh, whose mind, whose labab uh, are stayed fast uh, on the Torah of Yah. It's a day of great Sarah. And if that's not enough, it's a day of Metzkucha, a day of great distress. Strains of such agony and such debilitating. There are those that their agony is so debilitating they can't get out of bed. They can't walk. Although they can walk, they can get out of bed. They can't think. They don't even eat. They forget to eat. And you're telling them to buy silver and gold to buy what? You're not thinking about eating in this day. For all this multi-activity of complexity in your mind, you're distressed, you're oppressed. Demons are talking to your mind. The very manifestation of the shardims of hell uh, that are manifested before you. They embrace you, bring you into the bosom, into the mind of her shatan, uh, into thoughts against Yah. And when they do that, every kind of unclean thing, every vile thing that opposes Torah, the power of his name shall enter into your mind. You're not thinking about some damn bread. It's almost like a crack haddock. He doesn't think about eating. Those on methamphetamine. They don't think about eating until they come out. 10, 50 days and then they eat a little something. And then they go right back. They don't think about eating. And they're telling you that you got the bar silver. And go you bastards. You manzia of hell. Make a copy and send it to that weak individual you call a pastor. Hallelujah. I know we said reach, but it's ra'ach. Ra'ach, a ra'ach. It's one that always inspects, he has insight, and he knows where the wolves are. He keeps the wolves away from him. He's not a harling. These men don't give a damn. You understand, Yisra'ya? Listen to this descriptive niche of this day. It is a day... Every phrase it tells us it is a day of it is a day of wasteness. It is a day of show, show. It's going to reveal itself. It's a day of 
devastation, of death, of wailing and crying, a day of total destruction, a day of total ruins. Just like in Misraim, you think that when the plagues came, the next day they were all cleaned up. You think when the dead bodies were everywhere, all of a sudden the next day everybody were buried, the stench of death. You think about all the flies that laid maggots and all of that. Oh, you think that all the flies, all the flies just died and no flies, no maggots, and maggots everywhere. That nation, that nation is still like that today. Unclean, dirty. You think that, you think that all the flies just dried up? You think all the blood and the water and, and, and people drinking that and dying, the, dying of thirst. It's amazing that when you need water, when you don't, when you need water, you don't drink it. But when you truly want water, you, you can't have it. And you drink in that, and you can find them, the bodies rotten everywhere, bodies lying here, right? You think that they just go out and start cleaning stuff up? Uh, it's the filth, it was the retribution of thy kingdom power that rose up and said, I'm greater than the Most High Yah. Same thing in this damn wicked nation and the nations of the earth, the Russians, uh, the Britons, uh, and the France, uh, and the Spains, and the Portugals, uh, that reared nations uh, of their heritage and destroyed the people for their own damn lust for what? Silver. And gold. Goldman and Sa. Well, that's a name, isn't it? Goldman? He tells us the day of great show wasteness. And then he also tells us it is a mush, a day of desolation. In essence, it is a day of, of a wreck. It's just a wreck. Everything is distorted, everything is brought low, everything is brought that I'm bringing this into sight for one reason. Now don't get wrong, sister. You must understand it's a day of great wreck. It is also a day in the latter part of verse 15, a day of thick, uh, oh I'm sorry, a day of desolation. It is a day of darkness of Hoshakha. And the whole shack is a day of great misery and agony. Can you imagine living in a place whereby it's darkness uh, and every kind of unclean thing and things uh, that are gnawing on you. You don't even know what it is. Uh, it's a day of hoshek. Uh, it's a day of ignorance, of wickedness. It's a day of, uh, of great agony, of sorrow and pain. And that is coupled with uh, a day of clouds and Thick darkness, uh, the cloud of your truth uh, was before Yisrael uh, as they came out of Misraim. Uh, but there was, shall be no cloud uh, to lead us out of this darkness uh, because we have rejected the cloud. Uh, we don't want the fire of his Torah and the fire of your burn uh, or the Torah of your night led them uh, through all of the straits of the wilderness. Uh, we don't want the fire of his word uh, and his word is a consuming, uh, a powerful fire. We don't want that. Uh, you want these jackasses, these weak fledgling things, I will not, Does that trouble those that think they're strong and then they know they're weak, because they hear someone like this say you're weak and they're not hell not, oh, I'm as strong as you, then I know you're weak, I know you're weak, you tell me you're strong as me, you're weak as birds, uh, gala, okay, gala, birds dropping. I'm not going to use the word shysting, but you get the drift, all right? Hallelujah. Yeah. So you know you're weak if you think you're strong as me. Then you are weak. Because you got confidence in my flesh. You understand? I want to be like him. I want to be like Yahshua. And I have missed the mark. Oh, yeah. 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 Worn to this wretched thing. When a man is strong, he doesn't even have to think he's strong. This kind of teaching emboldens him. I've had many to say, Riach, my whole concept of teaching has changed by listening. And then there are those that get cowardly because they want to sugarcoat things and they see I will not massage their little wickedness they move away I have no problem with that Yisraya we must understand that the great tribulations it is Yah allowing the acts of darkness to manifest against him that's all tribulation is he's allowing the acts of darkness 
to manifest against him that he shall bring us to the light of his power, his might, his strength, his identity, that he is Yahweh, his son, Yeshua, and there is no other kingdom whereby can redeem you but this kingdom of almighty Yah. And we that are in this time, you're either going to be martyred or you're going to overcome by the power of the testimony. You will not love your life unto the death because you know who his assault is against, those that have the testimony of Yeshua and those that keep the Torah of Yah. You cannot have the testimony of Yeshua when you got a damn Jesus or damn Baal. You cannot. And that's just a fact. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hear what uh, Sophonia says here in verse, uh, verse 16. He tells us it's a day of the Shofar, an alarm against the fence cities. Uh, uh, it is amazing these, this, these last two words, and against the ha tower, against the pinna, against the pinna, against the chief places. He says it is a day, a day of the Shofar. And the alarm against the fenced city. We know that Yerushalayim was a city that fenced by Yah. And yet these nations today, they have fenced themselves with what? Uh, oh, it is not the great walls that they want to build, like the great walls of China between uh, the United Snakes of Hell uh, and Mexico. Uh, but they have fenced themselves in. They insulated themselves uh, with their silver and their gold and say, we're rich. Uh, we're powerful. We build our big towers. Uh, we build the World Trade Centers. Uh, and yet you tell me 19 damn heathens, you call them raghead Muslims. Uh, take down your institution of power. It, that doesn't speak very well of you. Uh, you say that you're in your high ivory towers. Uh, as in the old days, uh, those of the diasporas would say, uh, don't don't, don't Live in your hot tower, your white ivory tower mindset, all right? Uh, you got your high places of excellence uh, and your great monuments, uh, and yet they're coming down. You let one that calls himself a bastard, uh, he calls himself a, uh, a, 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 He didn't even call himself that. He called himself a mutt. Uh, and you tell me within the span of three years, he's brought down your damn nation, brought down your financial institutions, uh, brought down your medical system. Uh, you are a damn twisted nation of a people uh, and I don't take one damn word back I, even if I tried to get away from talking like this I can't I can't and wish I could exhort like the others but I just can't I just cannot of course I get mad and if a Sudik man is not mad by the oppression of the people, he's a, he's a weak devil. The people can teach the same message and people will love them. Oh, you did so well, brother. Oh, oh, oh. But when I teach it, it's a different walk. Okay? They don't like me. And I like that. Makes me work harder. Makes me drive harder. I like it when they don't like me. Because they don't love you. They, they hide the truth. They hold the truth of your unrighteousness. He said, against the fist and against their, their great institutions. Uh, look, look at what has happened here. Look, look what's happened in Europe, in the Euro market. The great institutions are falling. Their banks, their money, their currency. All of that. Because of their greed. Y'all say, but that's all right. There's something greater than that, what you think you got. It says, y'all says in verse 17, uh, he said, and I will bring, not man, Yah says, I will bring uh, Sarah, I will bring the kind of distress upon you uh, that will cause you to be blinded, to cause you to not even be able to maneuver in the narrow streets. Uh, you desire bread and there will be no bread given to you. Uh, you desire to redeem yourself from the hunger, the pain, uh, and you cannot use your silver and gold. Uh, there must be an allegiance to hell. Uh, you must have an opposition against the one that uh, is being incriminated for causing this to come upon you and you must set your mind to battle to fight against him denounce him blaspheme his name don't repeat tell him that what he is does not the Torah say all these things shall come upon men they shall die they shall stream they shall moan death and they shall not even repent of their evil and wicked ways and these wicked beasts are telling you to buy silver and gold that you're going to redeem yourself with that. You're selling out your imuna, Yisraya. Don't buy, mother, if you're going to spend a thousand dollars and go send it to me, my imuna. Send it. So that this truth can be declared. 
And then when you want to come and visit, we will have food for you to eat. And a nice place to keep you. You can lay your head, Mama. All right, send the thousand. Don't, don't buy no silver. Don't buy these liars. And all these men are selling silver are dirty bastards. They're greedy, rich bastards. I'm not going to stop saying bastard. Mamzia, is that more polite than they're bastards? Because anything that is a bastard, it is, is, is illicit. It has been born out of a relationship that is not uh, under the auspice of Yah's mandate or his command. All right? So their minds have been formed not by the reading of Torah, not by the inspiration of Torah. They are bastards, okay? They are bastards. They are greedy bastard dogs, greedy for money. They're taking your fiat currency, what they call it, and they're buying multi-million dollar homes. They're buying the Lexus. They're buying the Lamborghinis. They're not going nowhere with their damn silver to buy no Lamborghini. They're buying Lamborghinis. What are they doing with the fiat currency? They're buying more silver? Buying seeds? Listen, it's almost, let me say this. I'm going to finish today. It's almost ridiculous, even the seeds that whether they are, whether they are heirloom, and heirloom are seeds, Yisra'ya, that continuous produce from that seed. You can't see the seed from year to year. The DNA of the seed becomes inundated with the DNA of your soil and begin to produce better fruit. But even, and I, listen, when we order seeds, I purchase from two places. And the seeds are expensive. We just purchased seeds for the greenhouse. Those seeds were, they were like a dollar a piece for one tomato seed. Literally almost a dollar a piece. And when they say 10 seeds, they give you 10 seeds. They don't give you 12. They don't give you 11, they give you 10. And so out of those 10 seeds, you look at eight to be eight. Maybe if it's 90% uh, germination rate, you get eight, seven to eight. I'm simply saying that, that even the zero of the seeds you buy today, after even six months, they're not even worth a damn. They lose all life in them. I know what I'm saying. I got 5,000 seeds of seedlings over there I've planted. I must go tomorrow or Monday and go through each tray and reseed and replant because many of them there's no life in the seed. Oxymion, we saw he planted the lettuce up there. Oh, I, I know that ants came and got some of the seeds, but you see nothing up there. Because after six months, the seeds are lifeless. They have no life in them at all, Yisraya. And the seeds that we bought, they're not inexpensive seeds. You understand? It's not what you go to Walmart and came out two, three years seeds. It's not what you go and buy at Lowe's. These are from ordering houses uh, that grow and test uh, seeds uh, in some of the most harsh environments, Yisra'ya. The greed of this damn generation. So we can't worry about buying seeds and putting them back because we have them in nitrogen contents in there and, and, and they're going to be preserved. No! They're not going to grow. We must have the seed of the Torah. As one as we must have the seed of life, the power of his Torah in our bosom. We're always trying to save this damn flesh. Let it die. Yeah. What if I have nothing to eat? Then you walk by Imuna. Yeah. You know you, at least for 40 days, you can live. All right. We want the truth of Yah. We want to buy out of this excerpt of Sophonia and Tisaphania, what Torah expressed unto us. Hallelujah. Moving quickly, hallelujah. Yah says in verse 17, I will bring distress upon men. That doesn't say men, does it? A man does it say men, doesn't it? He says, and they shall walk like Ivra, blind men. Blind guides leading the blind. They're falling into ditches. Blind individuals leading them in the lies of Jesus Christ, uh, it is a damn lie. Damn their God. Like blind men, why? Because, 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 because they have had time, they have sinned against Almighty Yahweh. That's why. They have sinned against Yahweh. And their blood, and their blood, you know, I, I am a wordologist, if there is such a wordologist, a wordology. 
Okay, maybe I can patent that one. Someone patent that for me. Lend sanity, they all patent words, so wordology, all right? I am a student of wordology to understand the intricates of words, how they were formate, uh, formated, formalized. I love that etymology, I, I do. But when I see this word, when Yah says he's going to pour it out, he says, in the Hebrew, it is shor, shofach, shofach. He says, I will pour their blood out as dust. Do you grasp that? I was plowing the other day in the field, Oxymion, looking at my deranged plowing man uncivilized ability to man that tractor but i got it done i'm hoping we get the big tractor in here we we'll put that big disc down she walks like a baby i like big daddy she stretches how wide is that disc 14 she stretched all 14 feet out and say talk to me that little thing she she cries but the big daddy she sits down in that clay and say get up or get down and she says, I'm going to get down on you. And she gets down. All right. Look at you. Back in my days there. She says, I'll get down on you. And she settles her, her posterior down and she walks it down. That little thing, she, you don't have to worry about lumping up nothing out there on that big daddy. She says, sit down. Shut up. He says, I am going to shavak. I'm going to pour out. And as I was plowing, even that little plow, the dust just, we all this rain, but yet dust is just flowing like the wind. But Yah says, as the dust is poured out, there is nothing more aggravating than dust, is it? He said, as the dust is poured out, I shall pour out, I shall pour out your blood. Their blood shall be poured out as dust. And this is what he says. He says, and their flesh as, as the gale, or as bush, as dung. And this stuff stinks, doesn't it? It's always buying to refresh it, isn't it? Always buying to, to spice it up, isn't it? Always buying to make it happy. But the day come, you're not going to buy to redeem or satisfy. Your gold and silver. Well, what does the prophet say? Next verse. Let me see what he says. He uses the word in verse 18, neither, which is no or lo, L-O, Hebrew, lo. And when Yah says no, let your ye be ye, and your lo, your hen, your hen, let it be yes, let your no be lo, anything else, Anything in between, there's wickedness, it is hatta, it is sin. And Yah says here, he says neither. And the word low is absolutely not there. It cannot. It's an absolute. Mother would say, I said no, and I absolutely mean what I said. That's right, my Ema. You're the oldest one in here now. What mama know? A word like absolutely. She didn't know nothing like absolute. And I, I said, absolute mean what I said. I said no. And you knew when she said no. And Papa said no, he meant no. Yah says this, hear me, Yisra'ya. He says, neither, neither, absolutely. Do you hear this? You pigs from hell. You're the swine, you're dirty. He says, absolutely neither their kesef, the silver, their precious metals, those things are precious to them, the idols. He said, neither their silver nor their zahab, their gold, their precious metals, their gold chains, their gold bracelets, their gold watches. He said, none of that shall be able to nasal, to deliver, to cause one to be rescued, to bring assurance unto them, shall save them in the day of Yah's Ebra. 
the silver won't do it. No man might be able to chana. He will not be able to even cause the original concept of the knowledge of Yah to ferment in his mind when he sees the day of Yah. It is beyond comprehension. It is beyond the ability. That's why we need the mind of your sure. If we really get that mind, we will not act the damn fools we act. We will not act like damn fools, Yisrael. We will not be bitter and evil and envious against one another. We will do right by all Yisrael. All men will do right by, especially Yisrael. We will love Yisrael. We will let our love be expressed and known. Not this damn cold mess you call because you are full of your old damn iniquity. That has nothing to do with what you're teaching. Watch. You'll see it. I will prove it. You're so damn cold. What wife wants a husband that the love is cold? Uh, he says, she senses this cold nature. What man wants a... I don't want no cold wife. I teach her. I show her. this. No, this is what I want. You do this, you will have no problems with me. This all, and I don't request much. I don't ask of much, but this you shall do. Are we sitting like our minds are lost in some damn uh, hell dungeon of darkness? Hell, many of the bath don't even know what it is to be a wife. They haven't been taught. You can't call them. You, you can't blame them. They haven't been taught. My mother didn't teach my sister, if she gets married tomorrow, how to be a wife. But the woman doesn't know what a wife is. In homes you saw the mother over out the daddy made him a little weasel looking thing. That's not a mother, that's not a wife. That's a damn tyrant. You saw a mother lays his hell didn't do a damn thing. I saw that. Now you can be all sanctimonious as they would say. I saw it in my life, all right? Yeah. Yeah. So they didn't teach the daughters a damn thing. Yeah. And so anything that is strange to you is kind of makes you feel funny. That's why we don't like compliments. So if someone's saying, I don't like it, I'm not going to lie to you and say, I'd rather you don't, don't tell me that. Nah, stop. We must deal with realities of these factual things. And the reason they don't love nobody is because they haven't loved themselves. I love me. I love me a whole, whole lot. And if I love me, then I can love you. The reason you can't love me is because you don't give a damn about you. And if you don't give a damn about you, you don't give a damn about me. And these bastards out here telling you to myself, uh, they don't give a damn about you because they don't give a damn. That's why they live wickedly. You will never hear them talk about the damn sexual sins uh, because they're full of the damn wickedness. Yeah. Telling you to buy silver and gold. Talking about the damn world order. Damn the new world order. Yeah. It has always been one world order, one of wickedness. Uh, show me anywhere in history where my man has been kind. Show me one place, please. Uh, show me one place where they've been kind and gener generous with each other. I got a list of all the wars this damn wicked nation has fought. Uh, and these are the ones that are relative to history. So Bath don't know. And the men don't know. I didn't have no father to teach me love. No one to show me what love was. I saw men do things I knew was right, and I liked that. I saw this coward of a thing that her Emma married. And he was a coward. You know, one day, I, you know, I would allow him to kind of abuse me because I didn't want to create nothing there. And I don't know where it occurred that day, but... I'm 200 plus pounds, I'm strong as a bull, I'm fit as a fiddle. He did something or said something, and then when I went up in him, I said, boy, listen, his heart melted like a coward, because I would have literally hurt him that day in his own house, and that's why I did it too. Then when I saw the coward he was, I said, oh man, I hate I did that. I felt bad that I did it because he was a coward. You, you doing me that, I'm, I'm allowing you to do that because, man, I'm trying to love this woman. 
I did learn one aspect from him as far as entreating his wife. I did, and I, and I took that, and I utilized it. I did. Because I didn't know anything else. And I'm still ignorant. And so I processed truth and the knowledge. Sure, seeing the love of Yah, it teaches me how to deal with my issue according to Torah. Listen to this again here. He says, neither in that day, neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to nassal to deliver them in the days of Yah's wrath. It says, but the whole kol erach, the whole land, that means the whole of the earth, as opposed to partial or segments of the earth, that the whole land, that the whole earth uh, shall be achal or devoured. It shall be consumed, it shall burn, it shall be consumed. And the word achal is like one, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen what they call those speed eaters, or those individuals that eat like a 60 hot dogs, this cat that eats 60 hot dogs in five minutes, I mean that, and he doesn't have one shred of fat on him at all. No, the big fat ones never win. This cat is lean and muscular as they come. You know he has to egurgitate that once he does that. And that's what a call is. It is to devour, it is to consume without content. And I've seen him when they come. He, 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 he bite a hot dog. Just push it. Ah! Little water. Bite a hot dog. I show my issue on this clip. Little clip. They had this interview. There's a place in Texas. If you eat one of the steaks and all the trimming, you get the next one free. This man, he was as muscular as anyone comes. And because someone is built like that, doesn't mean that they can eat a lot. I've seen those that were huge and big, they could not eat six. The steak is that big, it's that thick. You don't have to eat the fat, I'm not lying to you. This cat, he did it in record time, they give you one hour. There are clips where people puke because they can't eat it. You got to eat all the beans. You got to eat all the salad, and you got to eat all the bread, and you got to eat all the steak, shrimp salad, and all of that. I watched this cat, and I watched you too. I'm not going to lie to you. I, that, I watched this man. He cut that steak, he sucked it in four pieces. How much time I got? Okay. You got 10, you, you, ten minutes, you're going 10 minutes? Oh, I got this. I watched this beast out of hell devour every piece like a lion. So when Yah says he's going to achal, he's going to devour, it means he's going to consume it with his mouth. He's going to, ah, he won't even consider what he's doing. He says, and I shall, he says, I am going to achal, I'm going to, I'm going to devour by fire, by his jealousy, his kenah. The kenah is the jealousy of a husband that has the disposition that his wife has done him wrong. He says, that's the way I'm going to be. For Yah shall make a speedy riddance, a khala. He's going to exterminate them. He's going to eviscerate. He's going to make a speedy riddance of them, all that dwell in the land. Your silver, your gold will not deliver you. No man is going to be able to buy or to sell. That has more ramifications than silver and gold. There's a reason why the silver and gold is not going to deliver them. You think that Yakahan spoke this without any reference to what was written? Let me show you this as we prepare to close here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'll take this farther on next Shabbat. All right. It says in the book of Yeskel, in the book of Ezekiah, Ezekiah, Yeskel, Ezekiah, chapter 7. Sophonia to Zephaniah talks about this great time of agony and great pain, did he not? And of course, in the, in the chronological sequences of the book, he comes after Yeskel, doesn't he? He comes after Ezekiel. And the Nobi speaks uh, that this precious Nobi, Sophonia, had, uh, had recognized this and he saw the vision, he could understand the very uh, metaphor of this. Uh, he speaks here in Ezekiel 7, 16. He speaks of a time of great distress. That is what Yokohan says. No man will be able to buy or sell unless he has the name of the number of this beast kingdom. Unless you are adamantly against, you are ready to fight against him, ready to bring down his kingdom and those that identify with him. He says here in the book of Yeskel 7, 16, uh, he said, but that they that escape or Paul that, that save themselves, uh, 
that deliver themselves, uh, he said, but they that escape of them uh, shall escape and shall be on the mountains like dogs of the valley, all of them, we that escape of them. We're going to be like the doves on the mountain. And he uses the expression that we shall hamah, we shall mourn. He did not say some of them. He said, oh, oh, if we escape, we shall mourn. That should be mourning and weeping. We that Paul let's escape by the truth, by what we have bought, by the knowledge we have. We have preserved in our minds, in our, in our thoughts. They that escape of them, they shall be on the mountains like dove, and they shall all come on. They shall cry as the mighty men shall cry. They shall cry with the shrill, this uh, great sound, this great voice. They shall, they, they shall cry with this great sound uh, of this sorrah, as we expressed in the beginning. And they shall cry aloud. Why are we going to cry? Every one for her or his. Ezekiel 7, 16. Everyone for what? His or someone else's? For his or own. That's why we must weep because we know our sins have been great. We have sinned against God. And everyone's going to cry because look how sold out your sure. And these bastards today are getting the people to sell out their emun now for silver and gold. See, I got security that, and they will protect the silver. They will, but they won't protect truth in their heart. They won't protect what is right. And they will hide that silver where no man can find it. And even they will forget. And they die. Who finds the silver? You're not going to be able to buy a biscuit or bojang or biscuit because you have silver in that day. This is greater than that. We must buy truth. Yes. Let's buy that. Yes. Let's buy knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Yes. And let's not sell that, Yisraya. Yes. He said, for our own iniquity, we're going to cry. And he tells us that all, all hands, not some all hands, uh, shall be rafa, they shall be feeble, they shall, men shall be disheartened, they shall have no strength, they shall have no power of the Gibra, no strength of a mighty man. And all knees shall be, yalach, they shall be weak as water. They shall have no strength in them at all. Listen in verse 18. Yah says they shall haga, they shall gird. We need to gird ourselves with his truth to be girded about our minds, our conscience, our thoughts. And they shall gird themselves with sack, with the sackcloth. They shall gird themselves with sack. And he says the palasuth or the hara shall cover them. This great trembling, this great agony shall cover them. Woe unto us that these are that day. Listen, Yisraya. Money will not do it. Your clothes, your wardrobe is not going to do it. It's not going to do it. Nothing is going to buy your redemption. Nothing is going to ease your mourning but the assurance of the truth you have bought. Silver and gold will not do it. It's going to rust like hinker. And silver and gold do not rust. He says, and they shall, shall cover themselves, or kasa, they shall hide themselves, and their busha, their shame, their indignant vile ways, shall be upon all the faces. You shall see it. And baldness shall be upon all their heads. And this is the catalyst here. Ezekiel 7.19. He says, and they shall shalach. Not just cast, they shall herald, shall throw it with great force. They shall shalach. They shall herald, they shall fling. Their what? Silver? You told them to buy silver, you liars? Yisra'ya, I tell you to buy the truth. Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and don't sell it as Shalomo commands us. That is your power of redemption. And you do not gala, you don't sell out to redeem your flesh. 
If your flesh is brought under great cruelty of afflictions, die in your shoes, mighty name. And all shall be well. He said, they are going to shalach. They're going to fling and to throw their gold in the hoots, in the streets. They're going to throw their silver in the streets. And their gold shall be. Now this, you must search Torah to understand the definitives. He says, and the gold shall be removed. Doesn't it say that? It shall be nida. It shall be like a filthy minister rag of a woman. It shall flow as something that is untouchable. He uses the word not just remove, but nida. It shall be like a minister rag of a woman. And the gold shall be removed. Shall be removed. The silver and the gold. You are a dirty child of hell. You lying devil. The gold and the silver shall not. Does it say that shall not? Come on, talk to me. Does it say shall not? I shall, I will not, I shall not be moved. Oh, I shall. We will not, oh, we will not be removed from the Torah. I got you, mama. I know you're singing it back there. I'm not going to be removed. He says, the silver, the silver, the silver, the gold shall not be able to nassal them in the day, the yam of the Ebra, the great outpouring of the indignant, overflowing, excessive power of Yah, and the day of Yah's wrath. Yah says, they shall not they shall not satisfy they shall not satisfy their nephesh neither shall their meah their bowels it says neither feel their bowels why your nephesh and your bow or your desire your passion as our Akshimri brought out to us the snares this is what he says he said because it is the mikshul it is the stumbling block of their iniquity, your belly, your greed, your lust. Your goal is not going to deliver you. That is the mixture of your iniquity. We shall cry for our iniquity, what he said. This is what is causing our iniquity, our mixture. This is the stumbling block. Our own bowels, our own greed, our own lust, our own vile nature. Your gold and silver, no man will be able to buy or to sell unless yes we see the mark of this of the mind of this tenacious wicked desire to go against Yah so let us as Shaul says unto those of Felicia let the same mind that was in Yahshua HaMashiach let that mind that Labah be in us may the riches of Yah upon all Yisra Yah I uh, you know, whether this word was an inspiration to you, that's all right. It is still the truth. I'm not trying to inspire you to continue to walk in the way we have walked. I want to, if anything, that we, we, we shuva, we turn around, shuva, make uh, a drastic change in our actions, our activities, our deeds, uh, to acknowledge the very power and the very light of Yah and Yahshua HaMashiach. So I'm not concerned whether uh, you, you know your comfort or anything like that. I'm not concerned about that. I tell you the truth, you buy the truth, and you don't sell it. May Yah's great riches rest upon you. You are friends, our listeners. We do greet you all in your sure smarty name. We do barak you all that have joined us, uh, the few. And so may this Torah imat be a great blessing unto you. I want to say to you all that have joined us and us here, we're going to somewhat change the order of our service in the weeks to come. Uh, I want us to begin to confirm our vows unto Yah faithfully every Shabbat. And we will go through the process. It will, in the next week or Shabbat or so, uh, our Zakhin he will, he will be the one that will function in that capacity that he will guide us through the process. So we will get this done. So it's going to change somewhat. Um, the whole emphasis is to bring uh, us to light of what pure worship is unto Yah, the value and the importance of it. It's not going to be some kind of rigid ritualism, but it's going to be whereby we can confirm our faithfulness and our oath 
unto Yah as we continue to press on and to proceed in this hour to, uh, to, to, to the expectations. And we should all be expecting that at the coming of our Hamashiach, Yoshua the Lamb. I uh, say so to you all, stay in courage, hold fast to truth, don't sell the truth. No one walks with you. Shaul said, when I came among you, no man stood with me. If no one stands with you, stand. You stand in Yah, by the power of Yoshua, by that testimony. And he has granted you the power to do that, Yisra'ah. Yeah. Stay, as the old folks would say, stay in your place. Don't. Just stay where Yah, just stay in that place. Don't try to remove yourself away from Yah. Because once you do that, woe unto you. Uh, uh, Shimri read to us, he that put his hand to the plow and turned his back, he's not even fit. That's a bold statement. He's not even fit for the kingdom of Yah. You're not going to lay your hands on this plow and go back, regress, and think you're just going to serenade in. It doesn't work that way. And that's a fact. Hallelujah. And we are out here trying to save everyone. We should, uh, ought to be saving ourselves from this untoward generation. Save yourself. You can't save anyone. You haven't done an excellent job on saving you. That's why you is. That's right. Not you. Are. You is in the mess. You is in that. Because your salvation, your power to redeem it hasn't been worth a damn penny. It has been worth gala. At least I can use the cows dung. I can use the chickens dung. I can use the goats dung. And everything around has been dung, dung, dung. We put some bush on it. Some turkey bush. Some chicken bush. We put some kind of bush. In the fall, I'll go over there and rake that goat house and get all that goat bush out of that. Yeah, the goat bush. I would use the other word, but I said like that for your tender ears, all right? What's not for the noham, the noham, the noham, the exceedingly benevolence of his great love, compassion, his mercies toward Yisra'ya. What would I be? May Yah brought you all, Yisra'ya, may he strengthen you all. We're going to uh, allow our Zakhain give it over to his hands. He's going to come with the last words. And this, Mr. Zakin Yaramaya Yabrak, all right, Yeshua's mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, let us all take heed, Israel. We know that the man, the men of Almighty Yahweh, when they stand up before us, we know that Yahweh's word is not going to go out. And it's not going to return unto him void, Israel. But it's going to accomplish that which it had been sent forth. To do, to judge us, to correct us, to redeem us. Hallelujah. So let us give told out to Yah for everything. Hallelujah. And all that he has done and for showing us such great ahava on this beautiful day. Hallelujah. We do barak you all. Those that are listening by via of live stream, Yahweh barak you that are listening. Those that are gathered here. And I will ask you all, Israel, you all to stand to your feet. Let us stand to our feet. Hallelujah. For Yahweh has been so tough to us. Hallelujah. How can we repay him, Yisrael? All he asks us to do is to trust him and to obey. Hallelujah. Let us turn. Let us shub. Almighty Yahweh, we do barak you for this beautiful Shabbaton, the Shabbat that you have given, Yisrael. And Yahweh, as we often ask, we do ask your Ruah will continue to fill Yisrael. Those that have gathered from near and from afar, that you will return them, Yahweh, to the appointed place, at your appointed time. At your melody, can we be a camp round about them, those that are listening? And we do barak you, Yahweh, for everything, for all things. In the precious and beautiful, mighty name of Yahshua HaMashiach, we do pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Yahweh. Hallelujah. Yahweh barak you all, Yisrael.